keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Achenbach. I'm here with Dr. Jeroen Bax of Leiden University Medical Center, and we would like to discuss a paper that he published in Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. The title of the paper is Assessment of Mitral Valve Anatomy and Geometry with 64 Slice CT. Dr. Bax, can you briefly tell us what kind of patients you studied and how you studied them for this project? Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, it is an intriguing uh, topic to study the mitral valve with the uh, multi-slice CT. What we did is what we observed uh, when you do multi-slice CT in patients for coronary artery disease is that you can also assess very nicely the valve. So we look at the precise geometry of the mitral valve. First, we studied patients referred for angiography that do not have a lot of mitral regurgitation, and then we switched to patients with severe mitral regurgitation. And you can very nicely pick up the different components of the mitral apparatus, and that has some implications for potential mitral valve repair. So what was the major information that you got from CT in these patients? Well, I think the information is quite comprehensive. You can look at the number of uh, chordae. You can look at the precise valve anatomy in terms of the annulus size, the annulus shape. You can pick up calcifications, but also you can measure where the exact uh, severity of the tenting is. And you know that ischemic mitral regurgitation, the severity of tenting is usually at the A3P3 level, whereas in non-ischemics, it's usually at A2P2. If you have this information, then for a surgeon, for planning his surgery, could be important. So would you think that CT can provide information that other imaging modalities cannot provide? Is CT more exact than echocardiography, for example? I think that CT indeed has some advantages because you can reconstruct at any plane that you want, so you can very carefully look at the valve. I do not think that CT is going to replace echocardiography, specifically with 3D echo at the moment that's very accurate for assessing these things. However, if you do refer patients with mitral regurgitation to check out coronary artery disease, absence or presence, you can also look at the valve and get this information. So you would not say that you know, certain patients who have mitral valve problems should have a CT imaging. It's much more the other way around. If you do a CT, you should not discard that valuable information. That's exactly what it is. I think you should not start doing CT in everybody. That's not where it should go. But when you do the CT in these patients, and you will do it because people have published about it, that you can exclude coronary artery disease without doing an angiogram, then you can also get this information on the mitral valve. And the surgeons, as we work with them, they're already looking quite heavily at this information. I have one technical question. Patients with mitral valve disease might often have atrial fibrillation. Did your patients have AFib, or would you say that this is only for patients who are in sinus rhythm? It's absolutely only for patients in sinus rhythm. When patients have atrial fibrillation, as you know, it's very difficult to get good quality CT images. And for these tiny structures as the valve uh, leaflets and so, this is very important that they're in sinus rhythm, otherwise you will not have adequate reconstructions. So no, you cannot do patients with atrial fibrillation. That's, that's important information. If we think about new therapies for mitral valve repair or fixing mitral regurgitation, do you think that CT might play a specific role for these new interventional approaches? Yeah, absolutely, because as we discussed, you can also look at the precise location and curse of the coronary arteries. So if you, if you see how they um, curse around the um, annular level, then you can actually uh, decide precisely whether a percutaneous mitral valve repair is possible or not. So I think this is quite useful information for novel therapies such as percutaneous valve repair. I see. Well, thank you very much, Jeroen, for this interview, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Mm -hmm.